I'd like to thank Ashcan and Graham, as well as the whole uh, Float On team for putting together this wonderful event. Uh, it's been a real pleasure learning about all the developments in the float community. It's good to hear the fresh ideas and to see so many people excited about something. These chambers, tanks, or pods that we provide have the ability to assist in self-directed transformation. I'm sure of this not because of what I've read about it or what uh, I was told about it, but because I used the tank to change me. The tank came to me after I decided to turn my life around. I left Hollywood in 1998 and moved to Las Vegas to recover from 25 years of heroin, coke, speed, and alcohol excessiveness. I went back to work doing shows, rented a ranch 10 miles south of town, and built a recording studio, analog, you know, tape. They used to do it that way. <laughs> so one day I was in the back where there was an old water vessel. I had my head in it and was working on my voice. When all of a sudden it hit me, I'm supposed to build and get other people to use deprivation chambers. I didn't even know what was a deprivation chamber. I saw a movie, Altered States, but thought it was a fantasy base, so I never really thought about it. Other than that, I had no reference. So I built one, got in it, and kept getting in it every day as I redeveloped my character. After 25 years of addiction, I was able to leave all the past behind and move forward without any assistance from any outside influences other than the chamber. It's now 17 years later, and not only have I not gone back to my past behavior, but it doesn't seem to exist inside me anymore. And for this, I probably owe my life. In 2001, I opened a place in Venice Beach, and no one came. It was me and the crickets. <laughs> Years later, after I was beginning to get discouraged, Joe Rogan called and started bringing life to floating. I can't put into words my deep gratitude to this man for what he's done for all of us in this room. Thank you, Joe. You're my brother. <laughs> One example of uh, confused mucky mucks was the Hard Rock Hotel. We, did, uh, we were trying to put a chamber in there, and they gave us, uh, we did 90 emails approximately back and forth, and at the end of all that, they decided they were going to need a, a security guard there to uh, overlook the uh, system to make sure it was... Uh, acceptable for people to use or whatever, but due to the lack of regulatory continuity in our desire to access certain markets, we started on a journey for certification. I would like to read a section from John Lilly's book, Simulations of God, which was published in 1975. Since all my scientific work on dolphins and my books on humans have derived from the work in the tank, we feel that the tank is a versatile, multi-purpose tool that can aid in bringing further advancements to the human species. We hope that in the hands of the younger generation, this potentially universal tool will be further simplified and rendered still more economical than it is today. We hope, too, that some sort of government regulations will be imposed concerning manufacture of the tank. Such reg regulations could be implemented perhaps by the Food and Drug Administration, which is beginning to impose on medical devices, supervised engineering specifications and standards, regulations which have been badly needed. We also hope that an underground will be developed and that will explore an entirely new region, unbeknown to man. The progress of the human species depends upon unsung heroes to be who will sacrifice their lives and lifestyles in the exploration of the furthermost reaches of the universe as we know it and as of the universe yet to be conceived. That's brilliant. This cat was outrageous, especially the last part, because uh, that's who's in this room right now. This is the group that's assembled here in this area now to take the responsibility to you know, bring John's uh, dreams and his uh, inspiration, uh, you know, more into the reachable areas for people to get with where it's not such a, uh, you know, uh, obscure uh, 
thing to think about. All right. In November 2010, after building chambers for over 10 years, we contacted NSF. So this is a NSF test report slide. In 2012, we started the longest test process in NSF history, concluding two and a half years later with NSF 50 certification and UL 1795 listing. That one is uh, 48 pages of categories. And then tests, of course, you know. Here's the electrical one. This one's, uh, let's see, uh, 32 pages. Thank you, Rich Martin, for having the insight and aptitude to assemble and proceed forward in an area uncharted with a team of experienced scientists and engineers including Sung Cho, Sal Aridi, Steve Fabian, Kevin Schaefer, and all the others at NSF that worked so hard with us to create a safe, durable, and legitimate system. Here's an example of how things are going in the insurance industry. Some providers are becoming more aware of what floating facilities are. I guess we're now starting to hit the mainstream. Uh, you guys have all been here for a while. I could have did longer time, but I, I don't really have a whole lot to uh, elaborate on. If uh, Here's where I think uh, <laughs> where we're at, you know. Uh, we're starting to penetrate into... into in, you know, somebody sent us a thing today. Vogue magazine has a thing on, on floating out just now. and Time magazine. These are publications that now we're, we're gaining their attention, you know, and then people are taking interest. And there's the people that have, you know, like spoke here today that are like pioneering in different uh, things. And uh, you got like uh, Nick and his guys, and, and they, we don't have any graphs or charts for us, you know. We, we haven't been able to, uh, what we've been trying to do is provide a, uh, be responsible and a good steward for this technology. Let, let people have a chance to experience this stuff because of the amount of benefit that can occur in a person's life from uh, understanding better themselves. You know, it's, uh, you know, understanding themselves better, I guess is what I mean. But uh, that's, I think, what the chamber is all about. It's introducing people, you know, to themselves. And uh, I, ha I had a thing I was writing down. It, it gave me something to care about. And then when I thought about it more, because I, I was referring to the, to the chamber that I cared about it, but you know, when I read what I wrote, then, then I realized what, what actually happened was it, uh, it allowed me to care about myself. You know, and uh, that's, a, uh, that's a big thing, you know, for people to get with themselves and understand that you know, none of us are perfect and that we're all on our way somewhere. And if we can get going forward without being held up and hung up and otherwise bothered by what's already happened, uh, I think we'll all uh, do okay. And I, and I believe that that's what, the, what this is all about, is people allowing themselves to become who they're going to be or who they are or uh, what they might want to be later. Is that it? Am I done? All right. Oh, yeah, that's horrible, huh? No. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the time here. I really appreciate it.